On this episode of Tinkering with Tony, we watch Tony as he puts his pistons into his motor, one step closer to getting this baby running. Watch it all here on Tinkering with Tony. Hello, we're continuing on putting the pistons in this motor. First, we're going to take an old piston off of a connecting rod and put a new piston on. I will show you how to do that. Here is an old piston. Oh, the lifter fell out of it. That's pretty cool. The lifter fell out of the <laughs> piston. And these are the new pistons. You're probably asking why am I putting new pistons in? Well, because we punched this out 30,000 larger than the stock piston. If we would put these pistons in, they'd be just slopping around in there. So you have to put new pistons on it. To start doing that, I'm going to put this over here. We have clips. This is held on with clips. One on each side. You have to have snap ring pliers. This, this is fun because you got to take it and attack it from this side because you can't grab it this way because it, the, the piston itself is in the way. So what you do is you stick this in there, put that in the other hole, if you can get it. That hole's plugged up or something. It is. Look at that. There's something in that hole. Look at that. There's something in that hole. I can't get in it. Yep. Oh, that's going to be fun now. Well, we'll try to take off one side. This side looks like it's good to go. Push in, squeeze, and you pull the clip out, see? These are the old ones, you really don't need them. Now, how am I going to get this out? Well, this old, this old guy is going to outsmart this, I believe I can. We'll see how good I am. At this, uh, might not, might not. Oh yeah, she's moving. Okay. Uh, there's something broke off. You know what? It looks like a looks like a point of a snap ring player broke. Well, gotta go to plan B. Uh, take a second break here. I'm gonna get a, a punch and push that out. Take the punch and put it on the, on the pin itself. Probably hitting the socket. Yeah. See the pins coming out. Dave, can I get your assistance here? Take this, hit that pin out. I'll hold the piston up. I guess it's just, there it goes. Go ahead. Perfect. Voila! We outsmarted the piston. <laughs> that clip is still in there, but I don't care. I'm not using these babies anymore. Those are just a little snug, that's why you have to tap it. But that's how you take the piston off. Now you can remember, mark your rods front. There's a front and there's a rear to a connecting rod. You gotta match it to the piston. There's a notch right here. F on the piston says front. Anybody need some? I got some used pistons. This is why we don't use these. Look at how sloppy they are. That's why we can't use these pistons. And this is the new one. Look at how nice and snug it fits in there. Oh, it don't even fit. See, look how nice and snug. You can't even move it. Okay, now that's the front of the piston, that little dent. F, front. 
Make sure when you put this together, you put it together the same way. What I like to do is take a little Earl, Duke of Earl, put a little Earl on that rod, makes it go in so nice. There, look at that. Mm, see how fast that went in? When you put a little oil on it, it does a big thing. Take a new snap ring, there's one right here, brand new one. Again, you're going to have to go from this side of the ring because you can't get it into the piston. Squeeze it and put it inside. Put it into the groove. One side's in. Why are you giving me a hard time today? <laughs> You can see the snap ring snapped into place. Little trick my father taught me. Okay, now we got that piston ready to go inside the cylinder. Got a crazy dog running around. Rings. I put the rings back in the box. I like to keep things nice and neat. There's the top ring, second ring, the oil rings. You put one of these spreaders, oil spreader ring, that goes on the oil ring. That's the oil wipe, it wipes the oil off the cylinder. Make sure the ends are together, right there. What I usually do is put the end in the center of the piston. That's why I know where it is, because you got to put two more rings on it. You want to not put them with the slots facing each other. So now I got to put these two on. Believe me, there's two here. See? Told you, there's two. The thing to do is you know you left the. the, 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 the what sign is it on? Oh, got to look for it. Oh, it's right there. There's just the gap. Okay, what you want to do is take this ring, start it on the bottom groove, and go right around. Work it. Work it right around until it falls right in. There. Now that ring is in. Now you got to put the top one on. And you, look, you can't line the, the grooves up, these screws here. You got to have them spaced around 90 degrees apart. So I remember where I put the other one, so I'll start this other one in a different place. I'll start it here, and this goes on the top of that spreader ring. You slide it around. This is the easy of the two rings, the three rings. It just falls together. That's the oil wipe, they call that. So that goes over here. Next is the second ring. This one has got a dot, which means it's got to be facing up. Okay, these are a little tricky putting on. So what I usually do is use a spreader pair of pliers that I use on my snap rings. And I take this and I spread the ring just enough to fit. We go. Voila! One compression ring on. Again, look for the slots for the other rings. Make sure this is not lined up with any of the other slots when you put it on. Now you got one more ring to put on. This is the top ring. This ring can go either way. It doesn't have a top or bottom or dot marked on it. So this is a bio-directional ring. Again, I like using these pliers. It makes it a lot easier. I won't break the ring because that's all you need to do is break one ring. You got to buy a whole set. 
Look at that, hmm? Is that a piece of cake? See how easy that went together? Now again, make sure this is nowhere near this one. So this ring basically is all set to go in, in the car. What we're gonna do is wipe this all nice and clean. Get our bearing. Make sure you put it with the tab in the tab. Like voila. Push it in. Make sure it's flush like so. That's ready. Do the same thing with the cap. Take the old bearing out. Wipe it. Make sure there's no excessive amount of goo dash on there. Another bearing. Again, make sure you got it in the tab. And that's where I like to start it, right where the tab is. And then just push the ring in. The bearing in and it's nice. Now you take assembly glue. You, you kind of load it up. Load it up. Spread it nice. Make sure it's covered, all the bearings covered. Make sure all the bearings covered because you don't want to put it together dry because it'll burn up. Now I take it and go no, rubber inserts. The reason I use these hoses is when it comes into the cylinder, you got your crankshaft sitting there and you don't want this to nick the crankshaft. You don't want it to put a nick in it and ruin it because you put a nick in it and you don't see it, it's going to tear the bearing right up. So you got to make sure you use something to protect the sleeves. And now, a little bit of Earl, you take the piston, set it right there, just give it a little voila, oil on the rings, I'll set it there, take my trusty pliers, this is a ring compressor to pliers, there's a bottom on this, it tells you there's bottom. That has to go to the bottom of the piston, so when you put this together, you slide this over the rings, like so. Come on, baby. It's not open for enough. There we go. Now you slide this over, like so. And then you squeeze it. So you can't squeeze it no more. What that does is compresses the rings so it'll fit in the jugs. Just remember, this is the front. This has to go to the front of the motor, not to the back of the motor. This is where the transmission is. So that's the back. When you put it in, you better make sure that dot is going that way. Because if you put it in backwards, the rod's going to be backwards and it's going to bind. It's going to cause a lot of problems. Take this baby, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one step. Russian here, yeah, I'm a Russian. What I like to do is take a finger, go ooh yeah, give a little lube. What that does is makes everything slide in there nice and easy. And when you start it up, it's nice and coated. You take a dead blow hammer. Set this bad boy in the hole where it's supposed to be. Set it in. Look at how nice that went in. Make sure this is lined up. This straight across. Take your dead blow hammer and tap it in. There it goes. Tap it till it stops. It stopped. So that must mean you hit the crank. So what I'll do is I'll spin this over. And look at what's sticking out. I have my connecting rod hanging right there. So now, when you put this on, you get a number and you got the slot. That has to match up with that slot. Can't put it, it can go on this way, but it's wrong. It'll pinch the bearing. That goes on. What I usually do is use a little power tool here just to snug them up. 
because I got to retorque all. I got to torque all these. That baby's ready to go. And what I like to do is after I put a piston in, I get my trusty breaker bar. I'll give this baby a spin around the block here and see how it spins. Look at that, huh? Like brand new. We got five cylinders in already. Which one am I gonna do next here? Let me see and I'll set it up. When you put, go to put your next piston in, what you wanna do is make sure the crank where the piston goes to is a dead bottom. This one here will be the next one, which is number three. So what that one is, it's the second hole. Here it is right here. It's this hole. Yep. It's, that's the number three hole. Because I have all the hole, I, I have five, six, seven, eight. Ford goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A lot of other manufacturers go one, three, five, seven. So what I want to do is I want to make sure this journal is at the bottom. This is piston number three, it goes here, and then this is piston number four. So we're going to put the rings on this one. We can't put all the pistons in because under this assembly, I found a bent push type connecting rod. You can see the bend in it. If you look closely, you can see it's warped. So this is, I'm waiting for a new part so I can put it in. So that's cylinder number one. Kind of shocked me when I seen it. Because the motor ran like a dream, supposedly. The only thing that causes that is a hydrostatic lock, which means you got liquid in there. Could have been fuel, water, anything. Put it on this side, you can't put that one in. And then we'll have all seven pistons in this bed, boy. You should be ready to rock and roll, Charlie. Got your DeWalt? My DeWalt, it's ready to go. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> You're like this thing. She's ready for number one when the piston comes. Shooting next week? Yeah, this is two zero. One piston left. What do you think? I wish I had all the rest of the parts. This baby would be fired up on this engine stand. <laughs> <laughs>